Good morning, YouTube. I'm here again to look at some more modules. This time, I'm going to look at four different wavetable oscillators. I would say three of these I quite like and have used quite often. Uh, and one of them, this is my first look at personally, uh, this oscillator. But they're all wavetable, they're all a bit different. I would argue that these two here are quite similar. This one's very different, and this one does things quite differently also. But let's just start over here with Namecorp Octal Wave Generator, which is an emulation of the Namco 163 wavetable chip from Nintendo Entertainment System. It's basically a, a chip tune kind of oscillator, I guess. But what's interesting about it is you've got these five different wave shapes uh, that you can morph between, and that's what makes it a wavetable oscillator, as far as I'm concerned. But you can edit these waveforms as well. You can draw your own in, like so. Uh, but I'm just going to keep it on the basic setting. And let's unmute this and hear what it sounds like. So it's very crunchy and uh, lo-fi, I would say. Perfect for chip tune, that kind of thing. But I just think it has a nice, weird kind of sound. Um, I used to have a Electron Mono Machine, and that had a SID chip emulator in it, which is the chip from the Commodore 64. Had a similar kind of vibe to this, really like raw and edgy. Um, so it's cool to have that vibe in VCV rack and you can see on the scope here how uh, the waveform morphs and how brittle and kind of aliased the waveforms are um, and in fact why don't we just bring in an LFO chuck it on here and let's just see how it changes that's pretty cool it's a cool looking waveform. I think that you could argue that this is not like the most wavetable oscillator ever because it's re very limited. But I kind of feel like any synth that allows you to crossfade between different wave shapes, I, I sort of think it that is kind of wavetable. It's not exactly the same thing, but it has a similar result. So anyway, let's move on. I've got this other module here from Surge. The Surge H XT collection is just next level good. I uh, actually don't really use the Surge uh, VST, like the synth, the plugin, but I love the modules um, so much. I use them all the time. And the Wavetable one is really excellent, I would say. You get heaps of different uh, Wavetables, including all of these Waldorf ones. Um, so let's have a listen to it. At the moment, it's just on this default sine PD HQ wavetable. It goes from a sine. Let's just turn it down a little bit. It's a bit hot. Um, let's try a different wavetable, though. It's kind of like a, a vowel. Wavetable. So that's pretty cool. Let's just turn it down a bit more. It's a bit grating. Let's bring this LFO over and I'll just chuck it in the mod here and bring the morph up so we can slowly go through the different wave shapes. And the cool thing about this as well is you've got this saturate control, which is always nice. But then you've also got the formant, which as you can see on this little scope here, it kind of 
pushes, bends the waveform across. I'm not a... <laughs> I don't know the science exactly about what it's doing, but I like the effect it has. And I like you have... I like that you have two different uh, controls for modulating the timbre of the sound. So let's just mute that for a sec. And then we've got this uh, XFX wave from Blamsoft. Uh, this is a really great wavetable oscillator as well. You also have uh, a lot of different wavetables. Not quite as many as the other one. Um, but you've got a fair few. So let's bring one of them up and let's listen to that. So let's have a quick look at these modulation options. So let's try decimate. I think it's pretty self-explanatory what that's doing. Some kind of uh, like sample rate reduction, I would say. Uh, ring modulation. So you've got like a lot of modulation, and you've got three slots here. So you get a lot of uh, mo options for modulating the wavetable. And combined with this, you can get some crazy sounds. So if I bring in this Sapphire module and make it go through the wavetable, and the y-axis will bring this in. And why not put a Z axis on this one and do something else? I don't know what Juno does. Let's give it a try. Ooh, it's like a pulse width. Goes straight to zero as well. That's pretty cool. Or we could do reverse. Oh, that reverses it. That's cool. That's cool. Wrap. Oh, wow. Yep. So, a lot of timbral options there. But you also have a, like a, a unison mode, I guess. You can bring it up to eight voices. Detune it. Spread it. Now... As it stands, going through this mixer, <clears throat> you're really not going to hear that because it's just going out as mono, so you're not going to hear the spread. But we'll get to that later with some uh, more detailed examples. And finally, I've got Poly 7Cs2 here. Really love this module. It's extremely unique, I would say, compared to these other ones because not only can you go through the wave table like this, up and down, but you can also go across and go between, like blend between different wavetables. And you can see down here, we've got the banks and the waves. So this left to right goes through the banks and up and down goes through the wavetable. So you've got a lot of options for modulation. So for that, Let's bring in, uh, let's bring in this, which is a random generator, basically. Let's bring it onto these two, bring up the modulation amount. And as you can see, it's, and up on the scope, it's doing some crazy things. So let's listen to what that sounds like. So 
So, I think you can hear that that's pretty fucking crazy. Um, and I think it just sounds really excellent, like a really high quality uh, sounding module. And even though you might not have access to like all the wavetables that you get with these two, I think that the way uh, it sounds kind of just makes up for that. You have a lot of, uh, like I said, modulation options and what they're offering is pretty extreme. So down here, I've got a mixer, I've got some effects. This mix is way too big for what I need. Uh, I've got this uh, polynome or sorry, Bacon Music Polynome, which is a clock with uh, five different outputs. Um, I normally use the impromptu clock, but I just thought I'd give this one a go. And it seems pretty good, like similar, I would say, to the impromptu one, but with more outputs. I've got that going into this Venom patch bay with a reset going into port eight. and. That's just to clean up the cables a bit. So we're going to go down to our first example here. So I'm using the the Namco chip here. The Namco chip uh, emulator has eight outputs that you can assign here with uh, different channel outputs. Um, so different voices basically, and. Uh, I'm modulating the waveform, which you can see here on the scope. On the second channel of the scope, I've just got uh, the LFO, which is extremely slow, so it's just going up and down. And I'm using this uh, Euclidean sequencer from Rebel Technology to control uh, or to gate this five-step sequencer again from Nitsi or Nisthi, Nisthi. Let's let's call it what it is, Nisthi. Um, and I also have the gates going out into this uh, gate length module, so I can shorten the gate length, and that's from Alicans. And the gate is going into these ADSRs from Nisthi. And they're of course controlling these VCAs. So it's just a nice little bouncy sequence. It's going through this quantizer here, Squant4 from Sikuzel, great quantizer, uh, in D sharp minor. So that's just like a real basic nice little overlapping melody and I really like that sound but we're gonna mute that and move on to the next example I have another pretty little melody this time using the CYC sequencer from Doc B this is uh, the first time I've used this sequencer, but it's actually really cool. Um, you've got six outputs. And in this case, I've got one sequence going on the red, one sequence going across these green ones, and then the yellow one is overlapped over both of them. So I think that that should sort of give you a sense of how it works. Um, you've got this offset knob that offsets where on the ring the sequence starts from. And that's a modulatable option as well. So you can get some really crazy generative stuff going. Right now I'm just doing something pretty simple. It's basically just three different sequences and one of them is created from like one half of the other and one half of this one. Um, but the real star of the show down here is the wavetable VCOs, which are being modulated by Cordal, which is a, as it says, mechanical chaos source. So, you know, another random generator, basically. 
I do love my random generators. Um, so I think it's a really beautiful sound. Um, that's sequence one, sequence two, and then I added this third sequence over here. And if we can mute these, that's just sequence one. And then this is sequence two, which is this one. And sequence three, which is much slower. And I've got these LFOs modulating the formant, which you can see here. And this is what the LFO looks like because one of the LFOs is modulating the other LFO speed. So that's cool. And all together, you get this nice tone. And controlling the rhythm over here is lapsus from Volt. And it's a, as it says, a non-Euclidean <laughs> a non-Euclidean rhythm generator. And um, <clears throat> I'm not really sure <laughs> how it's non-Euclidean <laughs> because it seems pretty Euclidean to me. Um, regardless, though, it creates some nice rhythms. Um, and that's controlling this sort of, yeah, the, 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 the timing of this sequencer. Got a few ADSRs over here, nothing fancy. And I think it's a nice little sequence. And I really like the way the wavetables are morphing all the time. <coughs> so, let's move on up here. Up here I've got like a nice pad going. And the pad is coming from chord key here. So I've got four note chords and they're being, uh, they're going through each of the, actually it's five chords, four note chords, and they're being sort of uh, sequenced by ADDR sequence, sequencer from Bog Audio. And that's controlling this oscillator here, which as you can see is being modulated. And it's really nice sounding, I think. And I'm using this uh, Cube LFO to control the position of the wavetable. Pretty cool little LFO. If I bring up a scope, you can see what it is doing. I mean, it's not quite a random generator. It's more of an LFO, but it sort of isn't just a straight LFO. I guess it's a little bit like if you were modulating an LFO with something else. Anyway, um, that's a really nice tone. That's just this sound here. And then if I unmute the other one, which is this one here, I've got a different wavetable on it and it's being modulated by this other LFO down here, which again, if I bring up a scope, and get a sense of what it looks like. It's basically just like an unusual shape. So if I bring the speed up, you'll see the shape of it. And you can control the shape of it with all of these controls here. A little bit sad that these knobs aren't modulatable I suppose it's possible that they are with an expander I'm just not actually sure I don't see I don't see an expander here anyway 
Let's bring this back down. And let's get rid of that. So on this one though, I've got the root note from chord key coming down here into harmony two, this module from Squinktronics. And it's creating different chords in the same key, um, which are then being uh, slewed with this slew limitator from Sikazel. Um, so you're getting this really sweeping bend between the chords, which is just an effect I always like, uh, especially when you pair it with this other pad playing slightly different chords, which aren't bending. So I think that's really lovely. It just sounds gorgeous. Uh, got an ADSR, of course, controlling the uh, the VCAs of both of these inputs, um, and that's all coming out into this XFX filter from Blamsoft again. Uh, pretty cool filter, lots of different types. Um, just got a low pass on it, and that's just to shave off a bit of the high end. Um, the filter is also being modulated by the same ADSR. And all that's going into a chorus and then into the mixer. Um, I do have a bit of a, like, uh, density going here. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, that actually can create a lot of wit, which we weren't hearing before because it was a mono signal. But if I mute the first oscillator up here, and then I just change the spread here and the density no spread full spread gets pretty wide let's just undo all of that and the chorus of course is making it quite wide as well and as you can hear I've got some reverb coming from I believe yeah, just from Plateau. Probably the best reverb in VCP. <laughs> it's certainly extremely beautiful, this reverb. Galaxy's really nice as well. Um, so yeah, that's another little pad sequence. And then in, finally, down here... I have Poly 7Cs and it's creating this kind of weird stuttery kind of sound. But if I remove this ADSR from this VCA you can hear what's happening. So I've got the note sequence 16, which is just randomly generating chords in D sharp minor. They're only four note chords uh, because I only have uh, four note polyphony. Even though this has a quantizer, so I'll turn it down a bit. Even though this has a quantizer, I've got a quantizer on it. And the reason for that is because I wanted to restrict the range um, of the chords so they weren't like all over the place in terms of really high notes really low notes so I adjusted the scale with this offset module which I use all the time but then it's going back into a quantizer from JW again just to bring it back into the scale because if I change the scale as in the range of it it won't be in scale anymore um, so that's what's creating the sequence but then I've got Frolic here which you can see on this scope another chaotic sort of random generator is controlling the waves and the banks as I demonstrated before you're getting a lot of a lot of uh, deep modulation 
So let's bring this back in. Bring the volume back up. I also have these two low pass gates. And the reason I have two is just because this is a stereo module and this is a mono input. So I've got two and then I'm controlling both of them with the mind meld uh, module. So just get a bit of filtering basically. So that's nice. Um, and of course I've got this this is controlling the sort of sound of the pads like this but then this ADSR is being controlled by uh, these two LFOs one LFO is controlling the speed of the other this one is a square so it's basically like a gate and the gate is going in here and controlling the VCA uh, sorry the ADSR all of that's going into this compressor just to squash it, give it some grit, and that's it. So this is just like one example of how you can use this. I often use this module for pads, but today this is what I ended up with. So all of these examples here, they're all in D-sharp minor, so they all work together. So let's unmute them. And I also decided to just make a quick little beat using these modules. So let's unmute that. That's really all I wanted to talk about today. It's just some examples of wavetables and uh, how I like to use them and how they can be fun. And as a final note, there are, of course, other wavetable oscillators. Maybe I'll look at them at a different time. Certainly this one and this one allows you to load your own wavetables. Um, and as does this one, in fact. But that's a video for another day. Um, I hope you got something out of this. Uh, let, me, let me know what you think. Please, you know, subscribe, like the video, share the video. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time.